Hey, this is Kevin Kitchens with Once Upon a Game, and I'm looking right now at uh, Dead Reckoning, the latest uh, title from uh, Tiny Battle, Tiny Tongue Twister, Tiny Battle Publishing. Uh, it's designed by Herman Lutman, uh, developed by Fred Manzo, Manzo with art by Ted Allen, Tim Allen. Excuse me. And uh, anyway, so I was just I was sitting here. Uh, Ruffling around with a, a turn and thought I'd just film a little little bit of how it plays. Um, it's pretty pretty straightforward. It's 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 actually really cool. There's not uh, there's not a lot of scenarios. It's a kind of a uh, random setup. Um, you've got these yellow guys, which are the uh, civilians. Uh, they're the ones you're trying to to rescue. You've got some militia militia here. Uh, there's one here. He's been activated already uh, for the turn. So they're trying to come up. And then you got the zombies that are starting out coming in from this side of the board. And over the different turns, they'll come in closer and closer and closer and closer and closer. So uh, you've got six turns. Uh, the six turns are divided into six phases um, where you, uh, uh, you alternate sides based on initiative. Or you, you can alternate. It depends on who wins the initiative. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, uh, and then each... Uh, uh, Phase will have a number of, uh, or each, excuse me, let me start that again. You will have um, six turns, three three day turns, three night turns. Each of those is divided into rounds. I want to make sure I have my, my terminology correct. Uh, so you have rounds, and each of those is divided into impulse phases. So, and then and each, um, each impulse that happens, there can be anywhere from one to uh, several, and you're alternating sides, again, based on who wins. It's very... Uh, it's a very clever system. I actually like how the impulse works on that. Uh, again, I'll show you that in a minute. Right now, I'm at the end of the fifth round. I mean, I'm in the middle of the fifth round uh, of the first day, um, first day, first turn, which is a day turn. Uh, the humans have a slight advantage in the day. The zombies have an advantage in the night. Um, uh, there's a lot to like here. I really, this is actually uh, more fun than I was thinking. Um, so far, I haven't won, obviously, since I've just started, but uh, just to show you a little bit of the gameplays, like uh, uh, I'll, write a, I'll write a review up here uh, later, but I just want to go ahead and get this in, sometimes it's easier to uh, show than tell. So right now, the humans have the, the uh, initiative for this turn. Uh, bid five, uh, zombies bid three, and I've got a little system for for doing that uh, for the zombies because, you know, if you know, it's kind of hard and I didn't want it to be just pure random. So I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so this means that the, when you bid for the initiative, the winner gets, uh, starts and they get to take the difference in uh, the numbers in that many, in that many actions, that many impulse actions. Uh, so in this case, I started at the humans start out with two that brought them down to three each left, and then the zombie will take the, you take one, 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 one. So the advantage of winning the initiative is not only do you get to go first, but you get to go last in the turn. And that's a, that's a pretty neat little system. I like that a lot. So uh, like I said, I'm in the middle of the uh, fifth action round, and the zombies have just, uh, they've already killed two of the civilians. Uh, and the civilians have, I'm not going to show you, but on the on the flip side, they have a, uh, a point value that you're not allowed to look at in the midst. Now, if they're, excuse me, if they're regular, they're worth a certain range. If they're VIP, they're worth a certain range. And so uh, you obviously want to target the VIP. They're worth a little more, but you still don't know. And there's some overlap in the ranges, I believe. So um, uh, it's really, yeah, it's really cool. So, um, all right, so the... The zombie side just activated, and what they did is this guy came in and did a close combat uh, on and killed a, uh, a civilian, took him out, um, and now it's the human side. So, got this one guy that I've managed to sneak up here, and he is wounded. Uh, the way wounds work is if you get hit, uh, first hit is a, is a marker, second hit flips you, uh, third hit kills you. So, and there, there are some options to heal uh, if you're there's a hospital. Uh, I'm trying to cover that by a unit, but it's, oh, it's right there. Um, so there's, just, there's some actions you can take that will heal a unit. Um, 
so anyway, so he's managed to sneak up. Um, and this militia has a P. There's no numbers. They're all uh, word, you know, uh, letters mean words. So P is for personal weapons. He can only shoot one hex. So he has no, he has no shot at this guy. Now he can move out of the hospital. He can do what is called a, uh, uh, what do they call it? Shoot and scoot. Um, but that's only for National Guard, Special Ops, and HQ units. And they can do a combat and half their move allowance. So he is a V in his movement allowance, which means he is a vehicular. Uh, so he can, you can see that little Jeep there. Anyway, that's kind of a clue. Uh, he could he could move six axes, so he could move, he could move three. Um, the only terrains, the terrain rules are simple. Hills and forest uh, are double to move into. Two movement points. Everything else is one. Uh, for the humans, roads are half half a point. So with the jeep, he could get on the road and you know, zoom really quick. For the zombies, they're allowed to if they're at any point in their move. If they're on the road, they get one road movement free, and then the rest is at full price. So um, he's managed to sneak all the way up from here, just on the road, and has gotten to that point right there. Uh, he got shot at once by this guy. This guy has a rifle, I believe. Yeah, he's an R, so he's a rifle. And he shot him. So I got this guy here who also has a rifle. But unfortunately, a rifle only goes range three. So one, two, three, four. He can't get to him. So uh, I'll look around here and figure out what I want to do. The human has two more actions. Um, I think we got, you know, kind of some bottleneck going on here. Uh, there is no zone of control, which is nice. So these guys are here, but they don't they don't you know affect any zones around them. So you can move past them and whatever. Uh, the zombies do have a neat limitation in that if they start out next to a, a human unit, they have to uh, they have to attack. They they can't they can't leave zone of control because uh, you know they want the brains or whatever. So anyway. Um, so this is militia. I could do I could do the, the shoot and scoot, and the river is impassable except for the bridges. So, but you can shoot over it. So I think I'll do that. So we're gonna take him and we're gonna just move him one. He could move. Uh, he's a he's a walker. He's a W. So he can only move two axes. So he's allowed to move half his half his movement. So we'll move him one. And that puts him within three of the horde of zombies that are standing there at that crossroads. And the goal there was to try to stop some of these guys from getting across, is to, is to try to get in here. But, you know, as you're learning the game, you're going to make mistakes. So here's how the combat works. It's very cool. There's no dice. There's no dice in this game at all. So what we've got is we've got these militia platoon that's going to shoot with his rifle, range of three. He's got a target in sight, and we're going to draw a card. So we have human combat cards, and we've got zombie combat cards. And then in every combat, you... You draw one of each, and they're aligned. Only humans can fire. So this is from a previous combat, and they're multi-purpose. So you'll draw the same, the same set of cards, uh, and then just depending on what you're going through, uh, as to which section you'll read. So you have fire combat attack, which means the humans are attacking. You have close combat defense, which means the humans are defending against close combat from the zombies, and you got close combat attack, which means they're attacking. They're initiating the attack. The bullet symbol was it was it was written. It could have been a little better in the rules. Uh, it's written that the bullet means uh, that's how many hits you score. So in a close combat, as a defender, you can also score hits. Um, on the zombie side, you got the same sections. It's fire combat defense, close combat attack, close combat defense. So you work, uh, you know, you you just read the same section each time. So that's that's kind of nice. There's no no weird charts or anything like that. And you draw both cards. Um, one thing I'll show you here on another one is there's uh, chaos the word on the uh, on several on the cards, and then what happens is if both both players have chaos on their card, not one, not zero, but both, you add the number of the card. In this case, twelve, which actually I did have, and then you look up on the chaos chart, which comes in the book. And some, some event happens, like that one that came up was a uh, zombie player selected a human and they had to retreat one hex. So uh, following regular retreat rules. So it's a really cool system because, I mean, since the cards keep getting used for different features uh, or different actions, then 
the results are different. So anyway, so we moved him one, he gets to take an attack. So we're gonna do that right now. So let's put the guard. We got chaos, fire combat attack. If heavy weapons, you get two wounds. If one, if it's a rifle. So we are using uh, a rifle, which is R. Uh, and the middle is their, uh, the middle is their defense. And S means shielded. And W is walker. You start to, you start to learn them. I thought it was kind of confusing at first, but it actually makes sense. All right, so he has a rifle. So if rifle, we get one hit. So what, and we do have chaos on there. So let's see what the, what the zombie draw is. Zombie draw is not chaos, so we have to worry about that. Fire combat defense, you get minus one if zombie trot. Now, the zombie trot is um, their speed rating. It's a Z for speed. And this guy has a W, so he's a walker. So he's not fast enough to dodge. So, because of that, we got we got one hit uh, for rifle, and they did not get to take away a hit, and we get to apply a hit to this guy. So look at this guy here, he already has one wound, right? So we flip him over to the other side, you see his, his stats are gonna change. He went from a VIW to a VIU, and the U on his movement means he has the undead shamble, which means he only moves one hex now. And they got a stripe, which shows he's wounded. So one more hit and he's a goner. And then what you do is you take an activated chip and we'll put it on this platoon to show he's been activated for the turn. And then you'll cut over to the zombie side and he'll take an action. I'll do that real quick. Uh, see what I want to do here. This is, uh, this is live video. Um, uh, buildings are also, uh, uh, no, buildings are not, excuse me, I was saying buildings had extra movement points. So we'll have, uh, this, this horde come in and try to attack this already activated police SWAT squad. So we're going to move them in. These, uh, skulls that are on here, uh, and the fists that are on the, uh, militia and the um, civilians, the, good, the, the humans, uh, that is their bravery, and the higher number better, and that is their fear factor. So sometimes uh, there is a, uh, for instance, on that uh, Chaos Action 12, it was if uh, the fear factor is, you could, add, you could, you could make a retreat for, me, for a group whose bravery was less than the fear factor of an adjacent zombie. So you have to look at these things, and sometimes they'll play on the cards, sometimes, uh, you know, like we saw one there, just based on their speed, uh, maybe based on if they're in terrain, it may be based on if they're wounded. A lot of, lot of variables in there that on these cards. Um, for only a few cards, uh, the different combinations are, are actually pretty cool. So, all right, so we're gonna have this horde come in and do a close combat. So he's, he can, he's a walker, so he can move two. He'll just move one, because since he starts adjacent, he has to attack him anyway, uh, if, he, if he's activated. So we're gonna just lay him on there. We will draw the last zombie combat card. Close combat attack. He gets uh, one hit if the enemy is damaged, and this enemy is not damaged, so he gets no hits. But you still draw the other card. It's very important that you always draw the card. They're always drawn in pairs, so they usually uh, there's one time I think where you draw a card uh, from a different stack and and not draw a pair. So uh, they may move at different speeds. And you're gonna shuffle them. So no chaos. Close combat defense. He gets one attack and minus two wounds if in building cover. And he is in building cover, so he hits him. So he gets one attack, and the zombie had zero, so you, you don't go negative, obviously. So no hits on the human, one hit on the zombie. And because he lost, he has to go back where he came. He is going to take the activated, and uh, wound shits are the same. Just flipped over. So he's going to be wounded. It goes underneath. And since the zombie initiated it, take an activated marker and put it here. So the reason the activated markers are over here and over here is when you resolve this, uh, the human human side got five, the uh, zombie side got three, and you put them over there, and that's how you work back, you know, back and forth and determine uh, when you're ready to go. So that was the zombie's last uh, impulse of the turn. The human gets one more. Uh, let's see if there's anything we can do to take this guy out. Um, 
I don't really want to have him pull out a cover. Um, get rid of those cards. I have to reshuffle those decks in a minute. I think what I'm going to do is just have a have a, one of the humans uh, try to get out of the way. So we will do that. Um, this guy is already starting on the road. He is a walker. He gets two movement points. And these are half because he stays on the road. So we'll go one. Then we'll go two. And he's done. And then we can throw an activated marker on him. So the cool thing here is now the turn's over. And so a lot of these guys have been activated. Um, the zombie actually had more uh, activations than his three because at each once per round, the zombie gets a bonus brains chip. Uh, and you can play that once per round. So you can play it six times every turn if you want to. And how that works is three adjacent units. Uh, uh, not three, excuse me. In this case, it was three. Uh, every unit, every zombie adjacent to a zombie you activate with the brains chit, they all get to attack. They all uh, they all get to do what is called a, uh, a shuffle. No, a swarm. So they all get to move their movement, uh, and that can result in a close combat. So we had actually had three close combats. The zombies lost two, but won one, and that's when we took out that guy. So uh, anyway, so what you do now is you. Remove all the activated chits. That's another thing I like is you don't have to sit here and worry about, oh, he's just, you know, once they move once per uh, turn, they actually move once per round if they want, if you want to. So you have a limited number of activations, but you can activate pretty much anybody you want. So they're a little kind of, a little kind of hinky to, to, uh, to grip, or it's just my big fingers or something. Um, I do, I love these new counters from Tiny Battle. They're much thicker. The other ones were way too thin. Very easy to to drop and mess up. So I guess I'm right back where they were here. All right, so all the activated chits are gone. So here's how um, the uh, initiative bidding works. And so how it would normally work is the human player would, would bid one of their cards. Okay. Uh, there are nine of these initiative cards per side. At the start of the round, you shuffle them, discard three without looking at them. You get the other six. That'll be your initiative bids for the for the round. So three of them are always going to be out. The other player doesn't can't count cards and know what you've got, so on and so forth. Uh, so each side has them. See, I've got the zombie initiative up here, and i got the human initiative down here. I'll show you what I do. Uh, so then you would just, you know, each, if you're playing two-player, you would just bid. Bid, 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 bid. And the winner... Uh, the highest one, as we said, gets gets to go first. If you tie, if you play the same number, then what happens is, uh, depending on which uh, cycle of the day it is, day or night, um, in a day turn, the uh, human player gets the advantage. They get one action, and that's it. You basically have nullified the round, except for the human getting one action. And uh, on night turns, the zombie would get one action. So, And then you would go to the next round. So... You know, you both bid your fives because you want to move, um, get a lot done. Uh, then you basically just negated those for the turn. So that's another interesting dynamic that goes into the into the game. But since I'm playing myself, it'd be very hard to to uh, to justify that and go, well, I would have bid this. So here's how I do it. So as a human player, I take the same same process. I discard three cards. I take six, and that's what I got to work with. So throughout the bidding process, all I have left. Is a one. Uh oh, it's not good. We don't know what he's got. So what I did for the zombie player is instead of discarding uh, three, I discarded two. So they have seven. And then what I do is like so. Right now he's got two cards left. I don't know what he's got. Let me just shuffle them. Up. No, 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 no. Have any idea what they are? And then. Draw one, and if it's higher than what I've bid, then it'll stay in play. If it's lower, then we'll draw the other card, and we'll play the one that's higher. I was drawing two automatically. That's why there's the one extra one, because it's surrounding these two cards. I was just drawing two, but then I would know that one of the next cards coming up was the other one. So what I do is only if I need it do I draw two cards. Although I probably should just, maybe, no, I don't have to rethink that. 
Maybe just shuffle them up between. So anyway, we'll just flip this over. So this is gonna be better than one, right? The two. So I think we'll just flip two cards and see which one's higher. So it's a one. So there was a chance that we would have tied. So he'll play the higher one, which is the two. I can pick it up. Okay. And I get the one, so he wins. So he gets two activation chits. You must get one activation chit. And then you go back to your board and you uh, you can carry your activation. So if you get one, then we'll both be down to one, and then the human goes, Zombie gets to take the last turn. After the uh, the end of the turn, um, there's some there's some uh, uh, additional steps that happen uh, with uh, the refugees. I, I called them the uh, civilians, but they're technically called refugees. The refugees get to migrate. Uh, there's an undead avalanche step and then the, uh, we advance the game turn marker and it becomes night and you flip it over. But uh, just want to show you a little bit of the gameplay, uh, how you activate, uh, how you bid for activation, um, and how you can handle that uh, playing solo. Uh, really, I was a little nervous about this one because I'm, I'm not really big into zombie games anyway, but uh, but uh, this one actually turned out, has turned out to be, be pretty darn fun. So, uh, so check it out, I'll have a review up later. Uh, I just wanted to share that with you.